it's just a tad snowy at the top of Wallace Falls. I've been pretty much running in. Let's see if we can get this. Uh, anywhere from a foot minimum to, oh man, at least a couple feet <laughs> of snow. It's been treacherous. So I'm paving out the path here for what will be the race <laughs> that is here in, uh, in less than a week. So yeah, this is, it's gonna be interesting. Hey, how's it going? Thanks for watching. I'm really excited to highlight my first race of 2019, uh, the Wallace Falls 50K. We are exactly one week away from the race. Uh, the race is actually. Uh, they take place on Saturday, March 2nd, and there are three races going on, the 50K, uh, the 22 miler, and half marathon, and I'll be running in the 50K race. Uh, this is the second year uh, that this race has been put on. Uh, it's put on by Brian Nelson, uh, and he, it's his company, uh, Wander Bigger, uh, that puts it on. So I figured for today's post, I do a quick recap of the uh, course overview, uh, as well as I was out on the out on the trails today, so I kind of know the conditions and what they're looking like for this next weekend. Uh, there are going to be some curveballs on that end, uh, as well as my goals for the race and my race strategy and how I'm going to try to achieve those goals. So starting first with the course overview, uh, I'm going to focus uh, on the race that I'm going to be doing, the 50K. Uh, it's a fairly stout race. Uh, within the 50K, you're doing about 6,000 feet of climb, uh, and the course map is essentially three loops around the park with an exception of the first loop. Uh, you do a little out and back section uh, at the top um, of the falls and near Wallace Lake. I have photos for each loop that I'll kind of do a quick review of a little later on, um, but for now, just kind of hitting the high flyer stuff. So the thing I want to note that I haven't mentioned yet, Wallace Falls, uh, the, the reason why I'm running it um, is it's where I train all the time, essentially throughout the year, whether it's in the winter or summer, whenever, um, it's literally just down the road from my house. So it's really easy to get to, uh, and it's perfect timing in terms of a few weeks before, uh, my first hundred miler of the year. So as, as I mentioned on the course, you're going to be covering about 6,000 feet of vertical gain over the 30, um, 50 K 31 mile period. Um, so each loop you're getting about 2000 feet of climb. Um, like I said, I'll go over those videos here in a second, uh, but each loop I mentally break down into three segments. Um, the first segment being the beautiful climb, uh, the second segment being boring flat DNR road, uh, and then the third segment is fun downhill running. The first segment, the beautiful climb, is by far the best, the best part of the loop. Uh, that's where you get to see Wallace River, you run a right next to it. Uh, there are some fairly steep climbs, but you get to see the three stages of the falls, the lower falls, uh, the middle falls, which is by far the, the best view. And then a little glimpse of the upper falls, um, before you get up to the, the DNR road. The second section is the, the boring flat DNR road. So once you get up to the upper falls, uh, it significantly flattens out. Uh, with a little bit of incline um, on your way to Wallace Lake. Uh, you do get one pretty um, expansive view of, of the valley looking towards Seattle and towards the Olympics. Um, but in general, uh, you're pretty much running on a DNR road, so it's not that exciting uh, for that stretch. Um, but it, it does take you to Wallace Lake, uh, and that's pretty cool to see. And then on that first loop, uh, you'll actually head out to Jay Lake. So you'll run along Wallace Lake. Uh, you'll kind of disappear in the woods for about a mile or so. And then uh, you'll get to Jay Lake, which is a little bit smaller Alpine Lake. Uh, you turn around there and then you head back to, uh, back to Wallace Lake. And then you head uh, straight back out to the DNR Road. And then you head to the Greg Ball Trail, which leads into the final segment. And the final segment is the fun downhill running. So, of course, in the late spring, summer, early fall, uh, this is by far my favorite segment. Uh, that is my strength is downhill running. So um, it's runnable downhill. It's beautiful. It's winding through the forest. Uh, it's not too steep a downhill. Uh, 
And then after, so you'll follow Greg Ball down this. You actually follow a, um, a river down. You can hear the falls in the distance. Uh, but yeah, you'll follow, it's called Greg Ball Trail, uh, down to what's called the rail, railroad grade which is uh, essentially like the DNR road. The beauty of that is you're in the forest there, so it's not nearly as bad. Uh, and there's a little bit of rolling hills, but um, for the most part, it's all downhill uh, back to the trailhead. And so for this race, the trailhead is the, the start and finish of the, of the race. So I mentioned earlier the photos of the course map. Uh, here you would start at the trailhead. At the fork in the road, you would take a right there. Uh, and you would follow the trail up the river and up the falls to that curve in the far right there, which is the start of the DNR road. From there, you would follow the DNR road to the uh, Wallace Lake Aid Station, which is the only aid station on the course. Uh, on this first loop, uh, this is where it's unique. Uh, you do an out and back to Jay Lake and, uh, and back before heading down to Greg Ball. From Wallace Lake, you would follow the Greg Ball Trail uh, down to the railroad grade. Uh, so that's that left route you see there. Uh, it's all single track downhill from there and about four and a quarter miles back to the uh, start and finish uh, aid station. Laps two and three of the 50K are very similar to the first lap. Uh, the only difference being is you're not doing an out and back to Jay Lake. So you're just going out to the Wallace uh, Lake aid station and back uh, for those final two loops. So I mentioned earlier, this can be a stout race. Um, and I'm, actually what I think makes it a stout race is the timing of when this race is held. Uh, last year was the first year that it, it was put on and we ended up having a, like a foot and a half, two feet of snow in some spots um, that really, really slowed things down. Now given all the, all the snow last year was above the falls. So once you were, if you were heading up or if you're on your way down, it was fairly clear. Uh, with the exceptions being uh, it was a little icy and a little slick uh, the last like half mile or so heading up the falls uh, and then on the way down that was actually the worst section where it was uh, slick and snowy and slushy uh, later on in the day and that was for pretty much a mile and a half two miles almost the entire great ball trail so uh, this year uh, so giving an update in terms of conditions i went out to the the trails uh, today to kind of do a quick spin around to see how things are looking. Um, if you didn't know, here in the Northwest, we had a couple nasty snowstorms roll through uh, in the last week and a half, two weeks, uh, which just dumped snow in the area. Uh, so it, the trail conditions, uh, definitely snow has melted off a little bit. Um, it's definitely more snow than last year, uh, but it wasn't as slick or as icy as I anticipated. Um, that said, we still got a week before the race, so it could continue to melt off and you know, with the, uh, the race start in the morning, it might be a little slick early on. Um, but on the way from the trailhead or the, the beautiful climb section, so from the trailhead to the top of the falls, uh, there were some snow patches, um, segments with some uh, kind of packed in snow, um, a little slushy, a little slick in some spots, but really wasn't too bad. Uh, it's slow running, it's cautious running. You're not, it's not running on concrete sort of running, but, um, I think it's it's manageable, the sections that you can run, and power hiking is definitely um, you know, possible there and whatnot. Um, I personally don't wear the micro spikes. Uh, I just, I don't use them that, that often. So um, I won't be using them for this race. So it'll be a little sketchy for me, especially in that upper section right before the top of the falls where it gets a little steeper. Um, but uh, on the way up, it's not, it's not too bad. Uh, where it changes is once you get to the upper falls, there were, it was fairly packed in stone. There was a good boot path um, for a couple miles-ish. Um, maybe not quite that, uh, where it was fairly packed in snow, but it was very fluffy snow around. Uh, once you get closer to the lake, though, and there had been less foot traffic the further out you go there, uh, it, it was pretty nasty. Uh, and that's what you saw in that first clip to start this video. Uh, that was actually one of the better spots. Um, snow was pretty much anywhere from a foot deep to two, two and a half feet in some of the worst spots. So um, it was pretty, pretty slow going through that section, much slower than especially like a summertime or springtime uh, run for sure. But um, just due to the conditions, it's, it's definitely um, 
definitely slower going up there. In comparison to last year, though, um, I actually say it's pretty comparable. Um, if anything, maybe a little better, but we'll see. We'll see how that looks when Saturday rolls around. Um, you know, we got a week before it happens, so uh, there may be more melt off. Uh, who knows? Things might get a little slick. Uh, the weather conditions. Honestly, we're a week out. I don't know how that's actually going to look. If it rains and, and it gets it gets icy, that could get nasty, and um, you could be slipping and sliding around. So, um, crossing fingers, it's <laughs> not a nightmare and a slip and slide up there. The segment I didn't check out today was Jay Lake, so the out and back to that. But based on how things were looking around Wallace Lake, uh, that was one of the main reasons I didn't go out to Jay Lake was because it was just heavy snow. Uh, and it really didn't look like anybody went out to Jay Lake at all. And so I would have been pretty much kicking in a new path and uh, I was not in uh, the mindset to <laughs> go and create a new path. So, um, and then on the way down, it actually wasn't as bad as I ex was expecting, at least on the way down. Uh, there were some spots where it got a little slick for sure, uh, but it was it was manageable. Um, and then once you got down to, I want to say three quarter or so, it'd be about a mile and a quarter down the Greg Ball. So you got about three quarters of a mile before you hit the uh, railroad grade. Uh, it really cleared out. I was actually really surprised. Um, it was pretty much just single track dirt dirt trail uh, all the way down to the railroad grade. So. Uh, with a few patches here and there, but um, mainly muddy, but uh, really not bad at all. And then the rail gr railroad grade itself was pretty much clear. Once again, there were some snow patches, but uh, there was a, a pathway kicked out. You're 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 running on dirt the entire way back to the uh, the trailhead. So I think that's probably where a lot of the runners are going to make up uh, a lot of the ground or a lot of the time that they lose uh, from kicking around in the snow um, up by the lake and at the top of the falls. So what are my race goals? So uh, I mentioned in my last video for my race schedule for the year, uh, obviously this is my first race of the year um, and I'm a couple weeks out from the Badger Mountain 100. Um, and so really uh, this race is a training race for me. So uh, my three main goals for the race are one, stay healthy, um, especially with all the snow, who knows how slushy or slick I can get. In general, even if it was clear, um, this is a training race. It's not my A race. Um, I'm focused on Badger Mountain and then um, Mountain Lakes 100 later in the year. So my goal is to stay healthy. It's really just to have time on my feet, get the vert on my legs, continued vert on my legs, um, kind of rake rust or uh, shake off the rust uh, since it's been a little while since I've raced. Goal number two is to practice my 100 mile pacing. So it's a little tough to do on a 50K, but um, there are components I can practice. So the beauty of this is the snow is gonna be there, so it's gonna slow me down um, naturally. Uh, but with Wolf's Falls, you got a pretty solid climb, uh, about an 1800 foot climb in that, that uh, the beautiful climb section. So, uh, you know, my goal is to take it easy, especially early on. I have a really bad habit of going out of the gates fast, uh, and I've got better at it, but it's something I'm continuing to work on there. So um, starting out slower, uh, so especially the first two laps, um, and then uh, especially on the climbs, uh, uh, taking it easier and approaching them similar to how I'd like to approach it um, during my future 100s. Goal number three is continuing to practice and work on my nutrition and my hydration. So uh, water, especially over the past few years, I think I've really got close to dialing that in uh, between that and electrolytes. Um, I've had little issues here and there, but for the most part, that's pretty dialed in, just making sure I continue to keep the frequency up of drinking water. Um, the 50K, I'm not worried about. When I do race the 100, I'll need to definitely focus on ramping up the water intake later on. Uh, food though is a, is a different game. Um, once again, I've gotten better with that, but uh, I need to get in a better habit of eating on a more frequent basis. So this race in particular, I'm actually experimenting with a little bit of food, uh, new food. I've, I've used it in my training run, so it's not brand new, but in a race format, it'll be new for me. Uh, so I'll be carrying all my own food for this race. I won't be eating any aid station food, um, at this race. Uh, and so that'll help me stay in a little bit more of a schedule uh, in terms of getting calories into my body. 
so what's my race strategy? How am I going to hit my, my race goals, right? So I had my three goals of stay healthy, practice my 100-mile pacing, um, and practice my nutrition, my hydration on that end. So how am I going to essentially hit those goals? So uh, in terms of uh, staying healthy and the pacing will kind of land in the same category uh, because of the snow and the slickness. Um, if I go out too fast or if I overextend myself, uh, there's a high likelihood I could fall um, and get hurt. So uh, that'll help me slow things down. So st coming out of the gate slow, I know that it's roughly going to take me about 45 minutes uh, for a casual or a, an easier climb for me to the upper falls. So um, my goal is to hit 45 minutes on each of the climbs, uh, with an exception for the third loop, potentially, depending on scenarios. And I'll explain that in a second. Uh, and then... Uh, I tie it in with my climbs a lot, following my heart rate. I've been doing that a lot more this year, and it's helped. Uh, but for this particular race, for the flats, it's really tough to monitor my pace and kind of comparing that with my effort levels. So uh, because of the snow, I'm going to be working so much harder at a slower pace. So I'll be watching my heart rate a little bit more closely for this particular race, making sure um, I don't get over, spend too much time above uh, roughly where my lactate threshold is at. So... I don't want to bonk, um, and I want to, I want to have a easier race experience. Uh, once again, I'm practicing where I would like to keep my heart rate during a 100 mile race. So, um, keeping it slow early on. Uh, luckily, I run out there all the time too, so that'll help me in terms of timing, in terms of getting up the climbs. But um, for each lap, especially the first two, 45 minutes for the climb, uh, and then keeping my my heart rate down, ideally. Uh, right at or a little below 160 uh, for the entire race. In terms of race strategy with the nutrition and, and hydration, uh, from the food standpoint, uh, like I said, I'll be carrying uh, all my food for this race. Uh, it's easy to pack, and so that'll allow me to keep track of my calories. Um, I'll know exactly how much I've ate and uh, where I need to catch up and, and whatnot. Hopefully, I, I should not be catching up so during this race, but uh, I have my kind of spots already laid out where I'm going to uh, consume food at, at, based on timing. Uh, so I'm looking at eating food at around an hour, uh, which that'll mean I'll be eating food just before the Wallace Lake aid station. And then, uh, and then eating food at the, at the turnaround point, the start and finish line. So after the, uh, the end of a loop, uh, I'll be consuming, uh, food at that point. So, uh, but once again, with the snow and whatnot, that could slow things down, depending on effort level, level, all of that. I may have to change that up. The biggest thing is uh, getting food in every hour, So, and I'll be watching that pretty closely. Um, in terms of the hydration, like I said, I've got that pretty dialed in, and I'm going to vary that, honestly, based on the temperatures. When it's colder out, and especially if you're not working as hard, uh, the amount of water you need to be consuming it doesn't need to quite be there as high as, let's say, a, a really hot race where you're working really, really hard. So um, I'm still going to be aiming minimum 20 ounces, uh, maximum 30 ounces of water uh, an hour. Oh, the 30 would actually be a little over the top, especially with where temperatures are at. So um, I'm looking at sipping on my water bottles every uh, 10 minutes. Um, if the weather's really cool heading in, maybe I'll do every 15 minutes. Um, either way, it's that frequency. That's really what it comes down to is just building the frequency of, uh, of drinking water. Uh, the electrolyte side won't be an issue, uh, during this race. So that'll, that'll be incorporated into my bottles as well. Thanks for watching. Uh, if you're watching this video before the race, best of luck. Maybe I'll see you out there. Um, hopefully some of the tips I threw in here help you out in your own, um, your own race. Uh, for future years. Hopefully this helps you as well. Who knows how the weather is for you. Hopefully it's not dumping snow for it. Um, and then, yeah, make sure to subscribe below. Uh, if you have any comments or questions on that end, definitely put them below. I, I know I kind of skimmed over the, uh, the course overview and everything, um, you know, specifics in terms of the, the gear I'm using and whatnot for the race. So um, feel free to post those comments down below. Uh, and of course, uh, I post a lot of pretty much daily content on uh, Facebook and Instagram, and you can find me at The Trail Grinder.